Mayday. 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 Emergency auto land in seven minutes. Today, Cirrus has introduced the G7 Plus. It comes with a whole bunch of things like automatic pitot heat, over-the-air database updates, but the thing that's really important is auto land, or as Cirrus call it, safe return. This now enables, for the first time in any production piston aircraft, a passenger to just press a button when there's an incapacitated pilot and for the aircraft to take control and land itself at the nearest appropriate airfield. Hello Ian and all of my flyer friends over in the UK. Today, I'm going to show you a safe return activation on an SR-22. So Cirrus is introducing safe return emergency auto land on all of our SR series aircraft. Ian, I'm quite sad that we're not able to fly together in person, but hopefully uh, this flight and this recording is gonna give you an idea of what an entire safe return activation sequence feels like and looks like the technology all working together um, to activate the autopilot, activate the safe return sequence and bring the airplane safely to an automated landing and a full stop and an engine shutdown. Look forward to showing you the whole sequence. So let's go. One, two, check. Okay, so we are up flying around. All right, I'm just, I'm hand flying. I'm gonna let go of the controls. I'm gonna reach back and I'm gonna hit the button. So now it's enunciating that emergency auto land is activating. The autopilot's been engaged in level bubble mode. Remain calm. And now the emergency auto land safe return system is activated. It's engaged the autopilot. It's informing air traffic control what's going on, declaring an emergency, and it's actually calculating a route to figure out where the nearest appropriate airport is. It's now determined that Muscle Shoals, Alabama is the most appropriate airport to go to, and it starts doing emergency communications. So it squawks emergency, it broadcasts um, declaring an emergency on the emergency frequency, and it actually broadcasts to the nearest appropriate frequency as well. So that might be center, that might be a tower, that might be a nearby um, CTAF. What it's been doing in the background is going through the algorithm, evaluating the nearby weather, the nearby terrain, nearby airports, and it's trying to find the most appropriate airport to go to given the weather, given the terrain, and given the conditions of the airplane. So how much fuel you have and that sort of thing. It's showing us very simply, I've got 1.7 hours of fuel remaining. I'll be landing in seven minutes. We're 16 miles from the airport. Our altitude is 3,380 feet. Our speed is 150. And you basically, if you look down here, you'll see the power uh, throttle and the mixture moving to configure for a cruise situation. So we're now basically in a cruise situation we're navigating to Muscle Shoals, and it's going through and telling the passengers what to do. And it's alerting the passengers that we're going into a right turn, we're gonna be descending for three minutes, we're approximately 27 miles from the airport. Sorry, approximately 15 miles from the airport. And we're gonna be landing in seven minutes. So now you'll see here, this is actually showing some rain. It will fly through green, so light rain. Uh, but it will avoid heavier rain. So if you see like yellow or red on the weather, on the, uh, it will avoid that. So it will avoid terrain, it will avoid weather, it will fly through like light rain. It will choose to fly around terrain rather than climb over terrain if that's appropriate. It basically has a pretty complex algorithm of things that it waits. Uh, things like how far the airport is away, what the train is in the way, um, what the airspace is, um, what the weather looks like, and it takes the most appropriate route to the most appropriate airport. So now we've maneuvered onto the final approach and it's configuring for landing. So you've seen the, the power lever comes back, the flaps have been deployed to 50%, and it's configuring to fly 95 knots. Now, it also assumes that your airplane has been contaminated. So it doesn't know um, exactly what kind of weather conditions you've flown through or what condition your airplane's in. So it takes the safest assumption and assumes that you've got ice on the airplane. So I'm just near the controls, but you'll watch. I'm not touching the controls. I'm not touching the mixture. 
The airplane is compensating for a slight crosswind up here in the air. You can see the yoke kind of moving its way around. We're committed to landing at this point. Once it actually puts the flaps down and configures for landing, we are committed to the landing. So the safe return system will not go around. Um, it assumes that the runway has been clear, basically declared an emergency and declared that we're landing on runway 30. So we're just coming up over the threshold. You'll see that power start to come back. We're aligned with the, uh, with the center line. And we're just configuring for that flare. All right, so there's the landing. We'll start to roll out. Flaps are coming up. Brakes are being engaged. We've reacquired the center line. The boost pump shuts off. The switch is still on, but the boost pump is actually shut off. We've now come to a complete stop and the mixture starts to come back. And you'll see that engine quit. All right, engine shutdown is complete, and you'll get instructions on how to actually exit the runway, exit the airplane. And that's it. That completes our demonstration of the safe return system to a complete full stop landing. Ivy, thank you very much for sitting down and talking to oh, us. Oh, my and pleasure. Thank you very much for the video. I'm really sorry I couldn't get over to fly with you. I'm sure that we'll find a way of putting that right somehow, somewhere. I hope um, so. So, this is a pretty significant jump of category of aircraft, I'm, I'm guessing. Yes, we are so thrilled to be introducing the G7 Plus. Um, I think the star of the G7 Plus show is obviously the safe return emergency auto land. Absolutely. Uh, in addition to that, we've got the GDL60 with the automatic database updates. And I'm sure as any aircraft owner knows, the updating of the databases is a huge pain point. So that's going to be taken care of with automatic database updates. Uh, your databases will never be out of date again. Is that right? Um, well, that's the, that's the plan but, with the GDL60. I mean, to be perfectly honest with you, um, don't take this the wrong way, but the safe returns are a bit more interesting and exciting than database updates. I agree with you, but the database updates I think is a pretty fun thing. Uh, the maybe other you need thing, to get out more. Maybe I need to get out more. The other thing that the G, uh, G7 introduces is runway occupancy awareness, which yeah. is actually something that's been in the news a lot, especially in the States, uh, which is airplanes kind of entering runways that are active. And by active, I don't just mean in use. I mean, there's actually airplanes so that are taking off for landing. Um, it actually uses the ADSB. Um, and so you can, t the software knows when there's an airplane either approaching or rolling onto or just taking the active runway. And it gives you an alert that basically says, hey, this runway is ac occupied. Don't uh, cross um, over the threshold. Okay, so that's a kind of, that's a warning for you before you cross the the stop bars or yep. whatever. Yeah, and if you actually does, does it do work the other way around if you're on approach? Yes. I guess you uh, no, 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 no. It's only when you're on the ground. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So come on, let's talk about the let's talk about the other thing. Okay. Safe so return. safe return. Safe return. I've got a few questions. Okay, I'm ready. So, if I understand correctly, this applies to this would apply to everything in the range. So That's that, absolutely that, that right. That mean that Cirrus won't build any aircraft at all without it. That's true. So uh, the SR-20, the SR-22, and the SR-22T will come standard with safe return. As, as, it, as and, well as the vision jet. As well as the vision jet. Well, we don't need to talk about that. But. And your hope that the deliveries will start um, So we're looking for deliveries to start, yep, this week, May, week of May 6th. So. Wow. Excellent. Excellent. And how much, I, I've got to ask, because everyone's going to be asking the same. Sure. You know, and something as powerful as that doesn't come, you know, not all things in life are free. It's true. How much? Um, so it's a little bit different uh, on each model. So on the 20, we were really mindful of the price point on the 20. Um, so we increased the price for the G7 on the 20 by $40,000. Uh, the 22 increases by 70,000 and the 22T is by 75,000. Okay. And how much does it, how much does it weigh? Does it, how many people does it steal out of your useful load? It's actually quite light. It's about 10 pounds wow. with all the equipment. 
that's not. And so, I mean, apart from the software, obviously, software is not that heavy. Mm -hmm. um, but you've got things like servos and mm -hmm. operating the the, uh, the, the radar altimeter, ra the radar, the brakes, mm -hmm. the mixture, the yep. flaps. Um, well, the flaps come on all the planes. Uh, so no, what's but they, they don't come on all the planes with that with automatic activation, though, do they? So, as you recall from the G7 introduction, we introduced smart flaps. Um, Good point. This year, we've actually also, or for the G7 Plus, we've introduced smart pitot heat as well. Um, that's something, the pitot heat switch is gone. Um, so the pitot heat will automatically sense the temperature and turn on when it needs to, when it's cold enough. All of those um, were sort of put into place so that the software is controlling um, or can control the, um, the flaps, the fuel pump, the TKS, um, ice protection system and the pitot heat. Uh, because based upon the safe return algorithm, it will control all of those things at different phases of flight based on the um, condition of the airplane and the weather outside. And that's why you've got that's why you've got the various little instructions that pop up if you in the unlikely event that you get a little system failure like the tank not switching, yep. it, it actually shows you what to do. Correct. It's pretty yep. funky. Yeah, kind of thing. So and the automatic fuel switching, that's a great example of another thing that, you know, that was needed for safe return as well. Because the idea of safe return is um, when a pilot can't land the plane, whether that's they're incapacitated or they've gotten into a bad situation that they're in over their heads or whatever, um, nothing that the safe return system does should require any sort of intervention. It basically becomes an autonomous vehicle and it takes care of all the things like <laughs> Um, setting the mixture correctly, setting the throttle correctly, identifying an airspeed, um, running through an algorithm that identifies the surrounding weather and terrain and all that stuff, and then configuring the plane for the conditions and configuring it for the different phases of the flight. Okay, so a couple of additional questions. Um, in the UK, not in the UK, in, in Europe, if you're flying with it, are there any airfields that it will not go to? So when it looks for an airfield, it looks for an airfield that is 4,500 feet or longer. Um, and that gets a little bit longer. There's a multiplier with altitude. So if you're looking at a very high altitude um, airport, it's just a little bit longer. Um, it has to be 75 feet wide and it has to have a GPS approach with vertical guidance. And it has to be hard surface. It won't bring you down to a grass runway. How are you communicating to the region's air traffic that they might suddenly hear a automated voice declaring an emergency? Yeah, so um, there's a couple things that it does. One, it squawks an emergency code, so it will show up on radar screens as an emergency. Yep. And then it will broadcast on emergency frequency, and it will also broadcast on the most appropriate frequency, whether that's a CTAF or a tower uh, or a center controller. But well, hopefully the sensor controllers or our equivalent of sensor controllers, if they hear that, that won't be the they won't be unaware of what it is. There'll be some kind of com comms going out to them. Um, right. So it will basically well, it will squawk emergency, so they'll see it on the radar screen. But um, but when it's broadcasting on the frequency, it broadcasts in a very automated voice, but it says things that a pilot might say. Right. It's um, you know declaring an emergency. The safe return system has been activated. Um, we're navigating to this airport, this is our position, that sort of thing. Okay, and I mean, the system's already available, the system's available on a different category of aircraft, like yes. the, the, the SF-50, on quite a lot of the turboprops. This is, this is its first foray into the piston world. That's correct. And the numbers of piston aircraft being built and delivered far exceeds the number of turbine aircraft being built and delivered. So within a, within a relatively short time frame, there'll be a large number of aircraft out there yeah. Um, with this system on. So I, I think I'm right in saying we haven't seen any activations of the system so far anywhere, but that I'm guessing that's going to change. I would agree with you. So if you kind of look at it in general numbers, um, the airframes that have safe return uh, or emergency auto, Garmin emergency auto land, um, their distribution numbers, if you look at that compared to the distribution numbers and the delivery numbers of the SR series, within about a year and a half to two years, there'll be more SR series equipped with safe return emergency auto land there, than there will be all other airframes combined. 